Hey, Nerf Herders, I'm Addie Thomas. I am Ben Milton. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Certain Point of View News and Reviews. Today we've got some news and some reviews too. Actually, we've Ooh. got we're t- going to talk Ready Player One. We're going to talk our roundup of uh, DC and Marvel TV shows, really mostly DC and a Marvel TV show and The Walking Dead. Uh, but then we also got some news today. Uh, don't forget though, you can always go to our website to check out all of our other podcasts at certainpov.com. So Ben, we just got out of Awesome Con pretty much this past weekend. Yeah, and I know this was not quite the ideal weekend for awesome concerts it was easter weekend yeah it, it screw having it on this weekend screwed a lot of people that are in my situation like you have kids and family obligations so i wasn't able to spend an entire three-day weekend at awesome con like i normally would right i had to be like all right well this is the day i can go and these yeah. are the hours that i can go and so i had to cram as much awesome into friday as yeah. i possibly could and yeah. it was awesome like it was really cool they had a lot of really cool stuff there yeah um yeah. i enjoyed it I, I thought it was i thought it was a good a good expo yeah, or a, a good experience. Yeah, it was hard. It was hard for me a little bit because it was empty. Yeah, and I kept like, like for what, like I kept like replaying in my mind like last year when you were dressed up as yeah. Darth Jar Jar and we were just constantly bombarded with people wanting pictures yeah. and stuff like that. That and memory was, alone just clouds what the the con really is yeah. when you're in that spot. <laughs> yeah, and I was all by myself. You yeah. were still at work, and, right? And I was just like wandering alone on the floor, and it was, <laughs> it was fairly emptyish. Like it really wasn't full. Like there were still obviously a lot of people at work, yeah. and 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 it was Easter weekend, so not a lot as many people came i think a lot of people didn't even know it was happening this weekend right because this is pretty early for it i know next year though it's at the end of april i don't know where that falls in relation to easter but i'm sure they're not gonna try to (laughs) to i hope it's not on easter weekend again that sucked but uh what did you think did you enjoy it yeah you were there longer than me yeah but not that much longer like i mean i was there barely on friday i had enough time to check out some booths on the floor on Friday, I didn't get to. I only went to one panel all weekend. That's how. That's how little time I spent there. Cause I, I, I got. Uh, I woke up in time to to get like one panel in the afternoon on Saturday afternoon. I didn't go Sunday, but um, I, I did go to the Overwatch panel with uh, oh. the voices of Mercy and Diva. How was that? Oh, uh, that was fun. I mean, yeah. those they they just said they were just fun personalities, you know. Um, you know, because it's gaming, it was a little bit different than what you know. Uh, some of the, like I well, it was funny because all the panels I wanted to go to were pretty much in this like from eleven to two p.m. on Saturday, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, so I, that's why I ended you up going to, to one. Choose. Yeah, because yeah. I wanted to go check out Rookers. Um, I wanted to check out Michael Rookers panel, but it was at the exact same time as the Overwatch panel, and I was like, ah, that's, that was a tough decision. Uh, and literally, it was because the Overwatch one was closer to me. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking like a true fat man. Right. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I waddled my way upstairs to the panels on Friday and went to the, I think, the one and only Star Wars panel they had all yeah. weekend. And the Redemption in Star Wars yeah, panel, right? Yeah, yeah, which is right in our wheelhouse. Yeah. And I was like, well, let's see. Yeah. Because we went to that one that... Was it last year or the was, year before? It was like two years ago. Two, two or three years, years ago. ago. Yeah. We were like, okay, we are yeah. not Star Wars fans. Well, it was <laughs> rampant speculation in the Star Wars Galaxy panel is what yeah, you're talking about. We were. I, I almost went to that one this year, except uh, I was definitely not uh, awake in time for it. Like, I was getting on the Metro when that was the starting. <laughs> oh, they did it again this year? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it wasn't the only Star Wars panel for whatever. It was weird the way they they did the book. Yeah, like for like when the panels were and stuff like your little guide post. I didn't use the app. I used the book because I was oh, only you there one okay. day. Book. The, so app, there. the app was super helpful because there was actually a couple of filters this year that was a little bit different where you could actually hit like a button for just all your Star Wars programming. Uh, and it brought up all the different Star Wars related events, including the guys who do some of the puppetry for BB-8, their panel. No, See, sorry, like that was one there. that I would have liked to go to, but it was just like this weekend being what it was it just didn't allow for that you know they the boyega panel was one that i considered sticking around for but it was just i ha- i had a long list of things i needed to get done and it was just like well 
these are more financial. Like, I got to do this because it's like finances are attached to this. To yeah, pay I was like, this year. Uh, I really yeah. want to, and and I still spent more than I want. Uh, I sh- I should have. I bought a couple comics. I visited our buddies at Source Point Press, mm-hmm. Ben Goldsmith. I got a chance to talk to him for a good chunk of time. Um, looking forward to having him on the show at some point soon. Get him on Skype or something. Cool. I think we'll, we'll you know we'll, we'll be a whole lot easier. But uh, you know, got got our comic sign. Got you know, Seance Room was our number one sign, and we both got one. a copy of number two, which yeah. is yet to be released. So, uh, so yeah, I can't wait to read that. Yeah, it looks good, and he and he showed me a couple panels that he's pr- pretty excited about and proud of. Cool. So I'm yeah, I'm excited to read that. So so from that perspective, it was fun. There was a couple of Funkos that I kind of wanted for myself, which, and I'm not like I'm not like. When did you start getting into Funkos? Uh, it was totally by accident because uh, basically I got it. I got one for free from uh, di- through Disney Rewards for all like a bunch of points I had accrued for going to see tons of Marvel and <laughs> Star Wars movies <laughs> repeatedly, and so I got this cool like the the this. Uh, this Hulk from uh, Thor Ragnarok with the, the armor from uh-huh. the from the yeah. fight. Yeah, the I have that. Hulk. Yeah, so I got that one. So that's the only one I have. Uh, and then the one that Case gave me from Overwatch, but it's, it's a character that I'm not really into. So Thanks, Case. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was thinking of we, we might actually give it away on the show. So, okay. you know, for someone who might collect, but we'll, we'll have details of that coming out in the in soon soon to come as as we we're, we have a couple changes coming to the show soon yeah. i think we'll kind of time that around then okay. but uh but yeah i but i saw a john stewart green lantern one and i was oh. like oh and then i saw a mr Meeseeks one oh. and i was like uh but i i you successfully walked away from Proud it yeah you. i know Proud of you. <laughs> yeah there was a couple things on the floor i saw that i really wanted to to take a closer look at i saw like a bunch of stuff for the kids like backpacks and hats and stuff yeah. like that for the kids that i was like ah not this year yeah. i'm not gonna do it this year and then i saw the guys over at uh sire's eyewear yes sire's crown eyewear who did my star wars glasses which have been broken for about a year now since aiden broke them by accident he accidentally kicked me in the face and and snapped the the um the hinge the oh yeah the hinge it's just the hinge that's broken and you you would think you'd be able to just buy a hinge uh. i've looked Everywhere, yeah. I've looked. I even took it to a store, and they were like, "Yeah, you got to take that back to the guys who made it." Yeah. So I talked to them, and they they gave me a sweet deal to get them fixed. So yeah, because if you don't get one to match the other side, like you'll feel. I like, couldn't find any. Yeah, I couldn't find any. Yeah, well, but that that's sort of the issue. Like that's why it's like go back to the guys or get a new pair at that point. Right. Yeah. yeah well, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm yeah. Not gonna. Not do gonna that. get a new pair. Not right now. <laughs> not right now. Uh, so, uh, I, so I'm thinking about getting uh, getting it fixed though, and getting a new prescription and having put yeah. new lenses in it at some point nice. so yeah I'm a, uh, it was cool it was yeah. cool it, it, it scratched that nerd itch of being a, like being in a room full of, of nerds yeah. and geeks and seeing some good cosplay I saw yeah. some amazing Black Panther cosplay I saw a guy dressed up as Killmonger that had the hair and everything oh yeah That's and I was awesome. like you douche <laughs> <laughs> but it looked good it looked really really good nice yeah. nice well let's get to the news so now is your chance to binge watch guilt free all the Netflix that you want Netflix is looking to hire people to view their shows and movies and then rate them. The job is called Editorial Analyst, and it's posted on the company's website. Actually, I've looked since then, and it's been taken off, but there are still some for, like, I believe Spanish language, and I don't remember what the other one was. Do you have to speak Spanish? Who well, I'm pretty sure it's kind of important because you actually be able to write in those languages. Uh, well, but you just press up or down. No, 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 not just rate as, like, as in reviews, write reviews. Oh, and for they're real? asking they're at, I don't know. I, they're asking for applicants who are passionate about TV and film, but who are also deadline oriented. So there's no word yet, though, on what the position pays. Well, I'm sure it won't pay, pay much because that's like a dream job. Like sitting right. around and watch TV. <laughs> Come on. Uh, it's like being a secret shopper. Like, yeah. It's such a sweet gig. They pay you almost nothing. Yeah, like, of course. You get free sh- You get free swag, basically, yeah. is, is what it pays you. Uh, and I know because I did it. <laughs> uh, and it was cool. It was fun. So this would be cool too. I wonder, like, it's interesting because right now they don't have any place for that. I guess they're adding that back in because they were like they took away the five point score system after the Amy Schumer yeah uh, debacle. And well, they said I mean, it wasn't it, about Amy's yeah thing, but it kind of it kind of yeah. looked like it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
and then they just give you the thumbs up and thumbs down. Well, it's not just rating it though. Yeah, it, that's it'll what I'm be, saying. Yeah. But there's no, there is no reviews anymore. Like there, you don't see anybody's reviews anymore. Well, I imagine it'll probably be maybe a section that they're planning to add. Or something. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. wondering if they're planning on on making that re- like the review thing more robust again. Yeah, where you can start to see maybe see comments again. And yeah, stuff like or that. make yeah. even make your own. Right. And so they're just planning on like kind of seeding it to yeah. to make it yeah. to make it work so people know what they're looking for. Right. That'd be cool. I, sure. I enjoy that. Like I would like that because then you know maybe there'd be a way like you like oh i recognize this reviewer i usually agree with their reviews right or they have some they mentioned some highlights that might resonate with you. right which kind of makes this show completely useless yeah (laughs) (laughs) well it could have saved us from six episodes of jessica jones right (laughs) just skip to episode six (laughs) guys don't worry about it well, if you've ever tried to tackle the monumental task of learning Quenya or Sindarin, then rejoice. The man who created those elven languages from Lord of the Rings agrees that, well, they're hard to get your head around. Yes, Lord of the Rings author J.R. Tolkien never expected people to be able to speak Elvish fluently. The BBC's archive Twitter account, which has which uh, actually publishes quite a lot. They published an extract from an interview first released about 50 years ago. In it, Tolkien said, I wouldn't mind other people knowing it and enjoying it, but I didn't really want to, like some people who have been equally inventive in language have done, and sort of make cults and have people all speaking it together. No, I don't desire to go and have afternoons talking Elvish to chaps. For one thing, of course, Elvish is too complicated. I've never finished making it. First of all, I love the fact that he said chaps <laughs> in reference to talking about Elvish. <laughs> I don't know, it's just something that works for me. I, you know, this is a, this is. It's funny because I spent all of like 10 minutes trying to learn Elvish once. <laughs> I did it in high school. Me and my friends uh, learned a little bit and we ha- like, we knew like enough that we could kind of talk in code to each other sure. around people. Um which is super dorky now that I say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, and we did. And, uh, I mean, it carried over a little into my freshman year in college. And then, like, I remember hearing, like, people speaking Klingon and, you know, and all, and I was just like, yeah, that, that's not, it's not an era, that's not a passion of my fandom. I totally get where some people do dig that sure and that's cool good for you man but i i mean you've heard this podcast you know i have a hard enough time with english <laughs> i probably shouldn't be speaking any other languages <laughs> you know so more power to you but what, what do you think like is it something you you said you only tried it for a little bit yeah then- i mean it like i i definitely see like you i see the area of fandom that really embraces it i, I think the the cool thing about these languages like Younger, like, I was like, oh, yeah, that that's the kind of thing I'd love to have that, you know, like, oh, here's a language that's totally useless, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> Only my nerd friends are going to get this. Right. Right. Yeah. Me you and know. 90 people across the planet will be able to have yeah. a conversation. Exactly. But it, it's also, like, it's actually something I've used every now and then if I, like, I need it, like, just an interesting name for something. Oh, okay. Like, I'll look it up. I'm like, okay, what's... It's the Elvish word for whatever, you know, something. Yeah, like, I that's at, always kind of fun. I worked at a place that was huge into Tolkien, and yeah. they named all their servers after, like, specific yeah. Tolkien and things. Which I, I I actually do, like, different locations and, uh, like, yeah. items and stuff. Like, I, I have named after, like, I think my computer is named after, uh, like, a, a Gondorian, like, uh, like a tower or something okay. like that, you know, yeah. stuff yeah. like that, you yeah, know, here obscure. there, yeah, like even Quick Beam, uh, which was something I, I used for a little while, uh, is the name of an ent that's uh, a young the the ent that's actually hanging out with Mary and Pippin because it isn't Treebeard who does it's right. Quick Beam. Who quick who uh, Treebeard accuses of being hasty, you know, <laughs> uh, which is sort of like it's just kind of a fun little like a nice little reference if you if, you know if, if you're you familiar to with know it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, so I yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I I totally get why people like it. I think what's cool, but the languages for Lord of the Rings I've always found fascinating. One because that like that was always Tolkien's fascination, and he like start like some of the stuff that he started with were the languages, but also kind of how it informed the culture 
and the style of these different races that he created. And it's one of the things that I think is so cool about what he did is in far, as far as the depth that it built and that sense of history that it gives that story that not a lot of other franchises or IPs have really been able to duplicate quite as effectively. You know, like Harry Potter is able to sort of rely on being sort of a hidden world within the world that we currently live in. And they have a slang, but it's not yeah. a full-on language. Right. You know. Same with... Uh and Star Wars, a lot of Martin's, that is fan driven, yeah. I think, and uh, the extended Fire universe. Fire and Ice is, is very much like that too, where it's got some yeah. slang, but there's not really another language. Yeah, everybody kind of speaks. And there's it. detailed history, but not yeah. to take anything away from any of those other no, universes. It's just not quite the same as what Tolkien did. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Well, with the home release of The Last Jedi, there's a new slew of Star Wars petitions making their way around the internet, although one's a little different. Some fans decided they need to see General Leia's arc finished, and now they're calling for Meryl Streep to come in and finish the role. I like this. Do you? I do. I just want them to write her off in between the movies. I, I don't need anybody else to play Leia. So At I, least not yet. I, I get that, and, and I'm, I'm sympathetic to that. I understand that. Here, here's my thought, and follow me on this. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that... The strength of a character can be correlated to how many other people can write it and produce it and play it. Okay. Um, and I also, I like I like the character of Leia. I want to see more Leia. That's true. I'm bummed that Carrie Fisher has passed on, but I like the character more than I like Carrie Fisher. Yeah. As if that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm not so tied to the fact that yes, Carrie Fisher is you know is Princess Leia. Carrie Fisher played Princess Leia. Right. It is a role. It is a fictional character. Other people can reinterpret that. I think Meryl Streep is a great choice. She's already played Carrie Fisher in a movie. Right. So it's not like she's unfamiliar with the person of the, yeah. uh, that who Carrie Fisher is. She's they were also, friends. Yeah. Yeah, and she's also one of the greatest actresses of all time. Right. Uh. So like. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good get. Uh, so I, you know, and I would, I, I am curious to see. Like we heard rumblings that, like you know, this last movie was going to be Leia's movie. Right. It was going to be heavily, and you know, it was going to be her arc and, and finished up. Now we're not really going to get that now. Yeah. So they got to kind of like readjust and figure out. What, you know, when you watch the last Jedi, like they're clearly setting it up. Like, all right, sure. well, she's the only one left. Yeah. <laughs> Here yeah. we go. Uh, and that would have been would have been awesome. So yeah. I'm not against it. Like I kind of don't mind it. I know a lot of people feel very differently about that yeah. and feel very passionately no 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 nobody yeah. else can ever play Leia yeah. but if we did that then uh, you know Superman would have died with George Reeves yeah. Batman would have died with Adam West yeah. like we never would have gotten other interpretations which we have almost all except for Adam West have come to love more <laughs> than those original interpretations right. you know what I mean yeah no I totally get it like I, I wouldn't be disappointed if, if they if they cast her yeah. or you know if they found someone who they felt was right to do the part uh it, it's it's such a foreign thought though it know? is strange yeah. it is strange because we've never really had that happen at least on the big screen right. like we've had people recast here and there in, like in the you comic, know in the comic like when it right. goes or in clone wars or something like that like we've had voice actors yeah. do the role and there's something over. different with voice actors you know you can't see the person yeah. or whatever I, I i get i get it it is different and it, but i think in order for star wars to continue to be and yeah. grow and for us to continue to get great stories yeah. with these characters that we've grown to love and and then we have to be willing to let that go that's true you know and, and i don't think i don't think carrie fisher would mind i yeah. really don't think she no, would i don't be think like, she'd care no nobody else can play Leia. Yeah. she's like doing a line of coke <laughs> i i think it'd be all right you know i I obviously just like everything in Star Wars, people are super torn on it and super opinionated of about course. it. Oh, but, of course. <laughs> uh, I, I give you the words of advice of Yoda and Jedi or, or Obi Wan Kenobi, and that is just let go. <laughs> well, the Fantastic Four has been absent from the Marvel Universe ever since the events of Secret Wars, and while the Thing and the Human Torch have popped up elsewhere as members of the Inhumans and the Guardians of the Galaxy, there's been no sign of Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman, and seemingly no plans for the iconic group of superheroes to reform. But that changed last week as Marvel's first family is making a comeback with writer Dan Slott from The Amazing Spider-Man and art by Sarah Pacelli, who was on Ultimate Spider-Man, and that plans are for this new series to start this summer. Okay. 
I like the writer. <laughs> I like Dan Slott like a lot. The, I like the artist too. Yeah, uh, Dan, Dan Slott though, I think is the right guy to do this because he also did a really great run on Silver Surfer, uh, and he's also done some fun stuff with uh, She Hulk as well. And he's kind of proven he had, like he's really good at like establishing who these characters are in an interesting way, especially someone like Silver who is so out of touch. Yeah. The fact I think specifically because he's handled Surfer, I feel like okay, he could bring something to the Fantastic Four. That's actually interesting. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I hope so. Uh you know, they are such an integral part of Marvel lore. It would be good to have them active in it again and and in a meaningful way and a right. fun way. Do you think in any way that this signals the confidence that Marvel Disney has about the Fox merger and getting that oh yeah those, that IP back I, almost without a doubt I think so yeah. too yeah. yeah I think that that really is is a big a big time like all right it's gonna happen yeah. we're gonna get this get used to having them in our universe because they're gonna be a big part of of it right this feels like part of a like a collective sigh of relief as we've seen the Inhumans fade away the <laughs> X Men come back and the Fantastic Four <laughs> it was like oh Marvel's finally getting back to normal <laughs> I agree yeah it, it's true. I, I wonder what they'll do with it. I wonder how the learners if they'll just be like, well, uh, you know, these two are off like getting marriage counseling, which they desperately <laughs> need. Is the if that's the only story I can think of. Right. <laughs> of like, well, where'd they go? Marriage counseling. <laughs> and that's all and I would just leave it at that. Right. <laughs> just leave it completely <laughs> mysterious. Let someone else fill in those blanks yeah. later. Right. Yeah. I would yeah. I I'm just excited to see what he, he does. I might read the first couple issues. I'll pay attention. You know, yeah. I'll definitely pay attention to see like what they're doing with him and see if it's going anywhere interesting. Sure. So the release dates of two upcoming X-Men movies, Dark Phoenix and New Mutants, were pushed into 2019. These were already pushed back uh, to begin with. Collider is reporting that in both cases, test screenings are the culprit, but for very different reasons from each other. So Josh Boone's New Mutants was originally supposed to be released April 13th, like next week, basically. Right. I was so looking forward to that. <laughs> right. And then it was pushed to February 22nd, 2019. And now it's been moved to August 2nd, 2019. So the reason, according to the report, is that while Boone is happy with the current version of the movie, the studio wants it to be scarier. To make the to make that happen, at least fifty percent of the movie may be reshot. And they're oh. adding one or two new characters who will be present throughout the entirety of the film. Now, there have been reports that are a little bit different. Another person's come out and said, supposedly, actually, this is closer to Boone's original pitch because of the positive response to the horror elements of the film and to tone down some of the superhero aspects oh, of okay. the story. Interesting. So, so it, yes, we're having a little bit like conflicting reports on this, but if the latter one is to be believed, like that's encouraging. And so far, there's been a lot of positive buzz, really, about this movie. The, uh, I mean, the trailers that they've released have looked amazing exactly really really cool like a really cool interpretation of, of a superhero film i i don't know how i feel about the idea of like well let's tone down the superhero aspect of it and turn it into just a pure horror film well, i don't know if i'd go as far as pure horror film but to maybe maybe push a little bit more into the horror aspect and pull back a little bit on the superhero aspect. I, I, I mean, it, it depends on what the story is. It depends on what the story is. Yeah. And it depends, uh, you know, because that really could work a little bit more if, like, if they, if you really want this to set be set apart, you know, for sure. But then you also run into fanboy trouble, and and alarms are going off in my own head of like, oh, they're just gonna kind of like reinterpret these characters and kind of change the fundamental aspect of sure. of who these characters are to make it a horror film. Maybe I'm not as interested in that. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's, it's funny. So I'm not a horror guy, really. You know, other like it's outside not of my zombies, favorite. Yeah, it's yeah. not my favorite genre anymore. Yeah, but I I will say that. I feel a little bit more reassured that we're not getting the Fox version of a superhero story just because a lot of times, like, and maybe I'm just using the bad times, but, like, Fant Fantastic was a good example of when they pulled back on some of the really interesting elements yeah. that separated it out, like the like the body horror aspect, the ex exploration aspect. They kept on pulling away from that. Like, if, yeah. um, and... and and then creating like, okay, here's sort of a generic superhero story, and that's we got point. we got to destroy this portal type of thing. So that that's that's my fear that that's the kind of superhero they were pushing New Mutants towards, and gotcha. now they're like, oh, like now that we're having a little bit more freedom, like with when when we saw these what creators are able to do with Deadpool and with Logan, maybe we should give them a little bit more free reign 
yeah. you know, depending on how yeah. how it's received. Yeah, I mean, as you I, that pitch, I'm all for it. How you read it originally, and I was like, Ugh, yeah, uh, that <laughs> I I'm I'm excited to see it now again. I'm like, all right, well, yeah, I'll wait another year. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's good, I'll wait. You know. Uh, so Dark Phoenix, though, is there, that situation is a little bit more cut and dry. It's directed by Simon Kinberg. It's starring Sophie Turner, Jennifer Lawrence, Michael Fassbender, a lot of the rest of that crew that's been on the uh, on a bunch of the other X movies. It was supposed to be released November twenty uh, November second, twenty eighteen. It's now coming out February fourteenth, twenty nineteen. So it's a shorter delay, and the reason is, according to Collider, is that after a test screening, the filmmakers realized they needed to do some reshoots. But the cast is really famous and in a whole lot more demand. So the only time they could get everyone back together is in August or September for the reshoots and then to have enough like runway to, to work on post production. So so that one that one is I mean, to be honest, that was the one I think we were all a little uh, a whole lot more skeptical. I'm about. not excited to see this film at right. all. This <laughs> Same is a here. film that if they didn't make it, I would be okay. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, Although they've gotten too far in the process at this point. Way, yeah. yeah, they're way in they're in way too deep. Yeah. They've spent way too much money. They're gonna release this thing whether it sucks or not. Right. Um Okay, I mean I understand what they're saying about about the cast, and it's going to take some time to get everybody together again to do. That. And you know, they're not also not talking about shoot, reshooting fifty percent of the movie like right. New Mutants is, <laughs> which is a huge deal. You're fundamentally getting a completely different movie yeah. at that point. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, I didn't I didn't love the last one. I don't. Oh no, Apocalypse was awful. I, I like Sophie Turner. I don't like her as Jean Grey. Yeah. Um, I, they didn't give her much to do though, so that's really an unfair assessment yeah. for her. Yeah. Well, I mean that whole group. I mean Ty Sheridan, who was in Ready Player One, was also a Cyclops. Yeah. He was boring. Yeah. The, I I wouldn't mind seeing Nightcrawler again, but you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's one of my favorite characters, and, yeah. and he looked great. Yeah. But there was again, there wasn't there was nobody really did a lot in that. Nobody stood out in that movie no, or in that not script. <laughs> and it, I don't think it was the actor's fault. No, it was a that was that was a phone that felt like Brian that Singer script, phoned in. Yeah, that script was just really flat. It was ultimately, and they was. just took all the life out of out of that. I mean, Oscar Isaac is a fantastic actor, and yeah, if and you was, if you somehow suck the charisma out of Oscar Isaac, yeah, you've you've done a bad thing. Yeah, so uh, you know they can't all be they can't all be hits, but yeah. based on uh, you know the X Men franchise, this one might actually be good. You know, it's usually like one bad every one. Other one. Yeah, every yeah. other one. Yeah. good. So we may have a great one on our hands. Who knows? It might You're be right. worth the extra four months. <laughs> so in an interview with IGN, Mark Hamill revealed he spoke to George Lucas about his intentions for Luke Skywalker after Return of the Jedi. And it was partially similar to Johnson's. He says, I happen to know that George didn't kill Luke until the end of episode nine after he trained Leia. Hamill said, that's another thread that was never quite played on in The Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah I mean, it's just kind of like yeah it's too late but whatever <laughs> <laughs> well I, I mean I in some ways like, I'm glad like it's in, like they, they could have they they gave JJ some wiggle room within the last Jedi where you kind of get the feeling that it's not the end of Luke Skywalker's story right Oh, you know, I, think, like, yeah, I think everyone dead, is expecting a but Force I'm Ghost. I'm totally expecting Force Ghost Luke Skywalker yeah. to be haunting Kylo Ren. Yeah. <laughs> and if he's going to haunt Kylo Ren, and you know, when Kylo's sleeping, he has time to go hang out with the Resistance. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I think it's. I don't. Ryan Johnson didn't ruin Star Wars for me. Yeah. Like what he did with Luke, I thought was brilliant. Yeah. I saw a quote from him. I guess it was from a YouTube clip somebody had posted about how. Um, you know, myth is ultimately not like a, a way to just give us entertainment, but a way to tell us life lessons and to teach yeah. us how to grow and to learn and how to handle being middle aged and the existential crisis that is life and how to handle all that. And it would have been untrue and unfair and ultimately not good myth storytelling to just give us the fanboy version of heroic Luke Skywalker. Right. Well, it's an interesting thing. Like, I I recently rewatched Ragnarok, uh, Thor Ragnarok, because I just wanted to throw something onto the background that was just sort of fun. Mm -hmm. I was, and, and and this isn't the first time, like, it, it's, it's a great movie, and there's some great character work in it, too. It's funny, actually, how similar that arc for Thor is kind of to Luke's in Last Jedi because it's very much um, a 
guy who's because he's super com- like Thor is like super confident. Like he's just he's he's making fun of Surtur. He's you know he's like as he's in the little chain. He's 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 carefree. He's throwing around Mjolnir. Mjol- 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 he's he's just having a blast being a hero. And then he's like brought down a peg, and then he has to realize who he's really supposed to be in the course of that. So it's a really interesting story of of failure yeah. and bringing the hero out of that failure. So like. It, it just so in just that way, it, like the idea of failure being so important to your development, which is such a central theme in the Last Jedi, it was so cool, kind of seeing the a very similar story, like so close to each other, you know, mm-hmm. like a month apart, pretty much. Yeah, this is when those two movies came. Do came you out. think that the 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 hatred and vitriol for the Last Jedi would have been lessened if they had told? that story a little more traditionally a little more straightforward a little more linear like they did for thor like you get to see thor step by step by step right like you get to see that, his, he's always the high he's yeah. falls okay i understand his fall i understand you know where he's at i understand the decisions that he's making instead like we get these flashbacks right. from luke and Which you know is still one of my favorite parts of that too. i i, I love I, I love the varying you yeah. know the varying different types of the stories that are told by each person yeah. and how it's different each time Here, I, I think it's great storytelling but i think that you i think I think a lot of people just didn't re- like didn't connect with that because it wasn't right. linear. Because even even the people who have gotten a little bit on board with it later on are because they watched it a second time and they kind of like, got a oh, chance to really I see enjoy what's that. happening here. Yeah. Here here's the thing though. I think the reason for that is again it comes back to people's expectations of these movies and it's that people are looking a lot of people are looking at Luke, Han, and Leia as the main characters for the sequel trilogy when it's. It's clearly Ray and Finn and Kylo Ren, you know, and and you get a little bit of Poe for you know so, some extra extra BB-8 bit. Although Poe, you know, Poe is a much well. There's BB-8 and, and Rose are still side characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, Poe is definitely a much bigger character in, in the movie. Last Jedi yeah. Yeah. than he was in in um, Force Awakens. If to be honest, a lot of that is really J.J. Abrams' fault. Because if he didn't have, if Luke wasn't absent from the entire first movie, you're not you're not in a situation where you're having to fill in the gap before. Like he leaves him, you leave Luke right at that place where you you kind of need to find out what's the next next thing that happens from that moment. So it's. It's funny because a lot of people blame Ryan Johnson for like some of the decisions he makes there, but like you're fit. You, like where what, else do you go at, yeah, after like, after the Force Awakens? Did you re- like? Did people honestly expect him to take the saber and just go like, "Oh my God, yeah, let me go and join the fight again, I've guys"? Missing this, <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, you, you build up this whole mystery of like, why has he disappeared from the public spotlight in the Force Awakens? So it's funny. I, I always find it funny that Johnson gets a lot of the blame for that when right. JJ really should share. JJ's the one who's well, they set should it share. They, sh- they share the the like. Uh, and blame no, is not the word. Blame is Disney. <laughs> Disney because they're the ones who are responsible. They're corrupting our pure Star Wars capital. No, they're not even doing that. All (laughs) they're doing is distributing and fronting the money, and that's enough to blame them. (laughs) Yeah, so I I think that's – I think it's funny. I think – but see, I think what ultimately I'm getting at is I think The Force Awakens set it up in a way where you couldn't do that. Okay. If – if Luke was the main character, yes, that's an absolute possibility. Right. But Luke, w- Luke was never it's the really main character. Ray's, it's really this, this is really about Ray. Yeah, yeah, this is about Ray. This is about Finn. It's about Kylo and Poe. At the end of the day, so unfortunately, the structure wasn't was never there to lend itself to that. Unless you do a dramatically different story, you know. I agree. So. I agree. And I, I, you know, I, I, I'm one of those people who did like that version of the story. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm an unabashed lover of this movie. Yeah. And, and I've even had to take myself down a little peg or two because I'm like, I love this movie a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> I love it just to be contrary. Just yeah. Because how much people hate it. Yeah. Like I there are a couple points I'm like, more. okay, I need to admit, like these are flaws. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's not a perfect movie, but no movie is. But it's it's maybe my it still is maybe my favorite yeah, Star Wars I, movie. I think yeah, it it goes between first and second for me in my yeah. my Star Wars rankings. So between this and Empire, basically. Yes, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it just kind of depends on what I'm looking for out of mm-hmm. my Star Wars at that moment. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, so uh, reportedly John Boyega met with Marvel Studios. And while there are no details, fans have been campaigning for Boyega to join the MCU as Blade or the DC Universe as Green Lantern John Stewart. Boyega was tight-lipped about any specific roles following Star Wars Episode Nine, but he did mention he'd love to play a superhero, but he would also like some roles out of sci-fi. Also, he would like to get more involved in the movie industry as a producer like he did on Pacific Rim 2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't get typecast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nah, you know what? The money is so good. It, it is. If you can jump from Star Wars to Marvel, or I mean, if you have to, DC, yeah. you, the money is good enough. It's worth it. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it'll help him as a, like, continue to be what he He'll have what he deep pockets coming out of Star Wars. Exactly. And, if he, and, and then if he's... If he adds the MCU to that. Got, and he's, he's... Pacific Rim seems to be doing well in yeah, business. It is. So, you know, he's making a ton of money there. So yeah, he'll, he'll be able to do pretty much what he wants to after What do this. you think of him as Blade? I don't know if I see I don't see, see that. him as Blade. I think yeah. that's just like, oh, well, he's a black guy and hot right now. So <laughs> yeah. what do we got? Oh, Blade? All right. Well, who else do we, do we have? Like, what? Yeah, I'm trying to... You know who would make a great Blade? Common. I shit I just not. feel like he's just going to go into a monologue for a bit <laughs> about meeting and family and love. And I'm all into it. And I'm into it. I, that, that's who I want to see as Blade. Like, I, I, I want, like, an introspective... Uh, a, little, right. a little older. I don't yeah. want. I don't want a young blade. I don't. Yeah. Like, I don't like. Really Boyega is a little too baby faced. A little too, for blade. Yeah, a little too baby faced for for blade. Yeah, yeah, I agree. He's just. He's a little too happy. A little too chipper right yeah. now. Which is is, is his mild. appeal. Yeah, 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 for sure. He, that's why he works so great as the you know, Star Wars and, fan. And, yeah. and his Pacific Rim yeah. as well. I need to have a little more miles on on the tread yeah. for for my blade. Yeah. Uh, so you know, someone in that in that middle aged. Uh, would, would be good. So, so apparently, Blade is British. Did you know that? Yeah, I never knew that. Yeah, I guess it's like obviously because Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes played him, so you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, Wesley Snipes can't act. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, but, uh, does, uh, like I kind I think it's kind of funny now to think about like oh like Boyega wouldn't even need to put on his American accent. Well, that's you know? true. Yeah, he wouldn't even have to act. <laughs> right. He just has to show up and whip a sword around. See, Idris Elba would be a great Blade. Yes. Yeah. But he's already uh, Heimdall. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. He would be a good Blade. That's why, like, you need somebody, like, in that, like, four, Weathered. Yeah, that yeah. 40s age yeah. group, you know, not quite 50s because you want to have him around for a couple movies. Right. So, like, late 30s, early 40s. Maybe Common's a little too old, but someone in that, that age group is, sure. is what I would like for Blade. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I don't re- uh, a Blade movie would be pretty badass. I'd be down for it. Yeah, I actually, yeah, cuz it's such a thin character, it, it does make a better movie than a story. Yeah. And there's not much Yeah, I don't Blade. need a Netflix Blade series. No. Yeah. Especially not 13 Unless episodes. you're going to create like Like it should be 5 episodes. Well, if you're going <laughs> to it would be cool if you created like a whole uh monster Marvel monster universe. Oh, that'd be cool. Like you have like, <laughs> Do the Agents of Shade. <laughs> yeah, like that would be kind of cool. Have Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, Mephi- uh, not Mephisto. Um, Morbius, oh, Blade. Yeah. I'd be all Frankenstein's horror. monster. Like if you did like a whole horror horror genre, you could do a TV universe yeah. around that. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Right. I would pitch that. We should pitch that. That would be, that would be fun. That would be, Disney's got to be looking for content. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they need something. Yeah, and that would be that would be kind of a, a new twist to put. It. I mean, I'm sure we could you know dig up some other characters that would be really interesting. We could put a cool twist on that would be fun. Yep. Well, so here's the big story. This is all the drama surrounding the Deadpool animated series. So FX announced recently that the network, along with Donald and Stephen Glover, would no longer be involved in a planned animated Deadpool series. In response, Donald Glover has tweeted 15 pages of a script that he titled "Finale." Uh, for an episode of the Deadpool animated series, which seemed was really more of like a commentary on whatever drama and whatever fallout happened. FX said in this statement, due to creative differences, FX, Donald Glover, Stephen Glover, and Marvel Television have agreed to part ways on Marvel's Deadpool animated series. FX will no longer be involved with the project, but FX and Marvel have an ongoing relationship through our partnership on Legion, which will continue. The Glover brothers were going to executive produce and serve as showrunners on the animated series about the raunchy Marvel antihero. And when sharing his script to social media, Donald Glover wrote, For the record, I wasn't too busy to work on Deadpool. So the plot of the meta episode uh, that that, that uh, Glover put out there, did you get a chance to read it? I've skimmed through it yeah. briefly. I thought, I thought it was hilarious. 
Uh, the plot of the meta episode has Deadpool traveling to Kenya to protect the world's last male northern white rhino, Sudan. During this adventure, Deadpool contemplates why his show is being canceled. Do you think the sh- they canceled the show because of racism, the hero asks, following up his thoughts with several jabs at Marvel? Neither Disney nor Marvel immediately responded to a request or comment. Also on Twitter, Stephen Glover added to the drama by posting this. He said there was actually a Taylor Swift episode, and it was hilarious. Definitely was the last straw. Our show wasn't too black. It wasn't really that black at all. But we wanted to, we, we definitely wanted to give Rick and Morty a run for their money, and I think we would have. He was proud of the gang. Test footage has also since leaked since the series of tweets as well. So I, I know you have strong opinions, a, at least a strong opinion. I have a, a strong opinion on this, yeah. which is what the fuck? <laughs> like, why? Like, okay, it didn't work out. Like, don't air your dirty laundry. Yeah. You know, to me, it, it's a real unprofessional move by by the Glover brothers to do this. And, and it kind of takes them down a peg a little bit in my mind. Like, I think they're brilliant. I think they're hilarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super talented guys. Not taking anything at all away from them. But this this is just a, an amateur move. This, is, this you, is a stupid thing to do. How different do you think it is from the campaigning that Ryan Reynolds did and leaking the test footage? Because that was straight up illegal. Like, Fox, remember Fox kept on having to pull the, the footage and everything? Like, do you think this is sort of inspired think, by that? I think it is inspired by that. And I also think that Ryan was smart enough also to let some time go. Yeah. And he played between, the game better. He played the game better. These guys played the game like amateurs. Yeah. You know, they cried racism yeah. and they, you know, and, and immediately went, you know, leaked yeah. out to the Do you think the they press. cried racism? I did. I, I, when I read the script, yeah. it felt like, I because a lot of people have gravitated towards that line. Yeah. And I think that's just the nature of the world that we live in. Because if you read it, I kind of feel like, oh, he's playing it. And then he even questions, like, oh, well, it's, it can't be that racist when they have this, this, and this. Here's the, like, there was a lot of, like, introspection going on about, like, the different reasons why, you know. But just to was. mention it in today's. In today's in environment, today, absolutely. You're, in today's environment, you're releasing it to Twitter, which is, like. The hotbed yeah, for, hot for race quick ta- yeah. Hot takes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, just by mentioning it, I think is yeah is in, in inciting that question, which I and I agree with you. Uh, yeah, I th- yeah, I think we live in a society where people don't read everything in detail. They yeah, quick yeah. Headline. Even if you were like, even if you were like, oh, it's not racism, and somebody yeah. immediately, like immediately in today's society, you go. Well, if he said it's not racism, yeah. why did he have to say it's not racist? Right. It must be racist yeah. because well, he's I just do, justifying it. Yeah. Because that, you know, just, that's why I do appreciate his brother Stephen coming out and saying the show wasn't too black for them or anything like. Do you that. think he meant like too black, as in you know? Because I, at first I thought that too. I was like, oh, they're talking about race, and then I was like, no, I think maybe they're talking about like dark humor. You know, because they're they're equating it to Rick and Morty. He's equating oh, it to Rick yeah. and Morty's dark humor and how how twisted. Now that I is. don't even know. I, yeah, see, <laughs> like now we live in such a stupid, stupid, silly time where right? you have to parse words like that, and you're like, I, "Is this racist? Is it not racist? Am I being a, am I being a racist because I'm reading racist into yeah. this? Like, I am I even allowed to read racist into this because I'm a white guy, a middle aged white guy? Am I allowed to think about racism at all, or am I just supposed to feel guilty about racism because these guys?" Are black. Like you just end up down this like stupid, stupid thought yeah. pattern. I, I hate it. I absolutely yeah. hate what what uh, identity politics has done to our society, it, even for all of its good intent. I, I whether or not this show was going to be good, it probably was going to be good. Here's the here's the real question. Like yeah. what Ryan Reynolds did worked and got Deadpool made. Do you see? any possibility of this happening for I do for for these guys I do depending on how people like if if they if there's a, a continued interest in this then yeah do you do it with those guys after they pulled this stunt I I think I in the same roles as showrunners I know it, it's very it, it is kind of easy to say no I but I think that's part of I think they're a big part of what really gives it, like, gives it this dimension. I think the other thing is FX is also about to, like, Archer is wrapping up in the next. I don't know. If, I don't know if this season's the Feels last one. Feels like this will probably they've, be the they've last said, season. They've announced a last season at some point. Yeah. I don't remember what season number it was planning. I think it's this season. Is it? Okay. I think. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. But my gut tells me it's this season. Right. So it, it kind of, like, it feels like FX has has room, you know? 
and like this is a this is a hot property for them to go with, you know. Um, like it just it just makes sense that it, it should be in their interest to do it. But I, yeah, I don't. Here, here's the other question: like, is it FX or are we deal? Is this in any way affected by Marvel Studios? You know, right? Who's who's to blame here for the falling out? That's yeah. that's what we don't know. Well, we don't even know who all the players are exactly. Right? Like, yeah. Because I felt where they went too far and they probably pissed off Marvel, whoever is Marvel in this scenario. Right. Um, is when they made the joke about pedophiles buying <laughs> action figures. And then did you see that line in the yeah. script? Yeah. Which I thought was pretty it's funny. Hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, and I felt like that's the kind of thing that, uh, whether it's Fox or Disney Marvel, they wouldn't have been comfortable with that line. You know? So. But you don't scrap a whole. Well, I mean, like. It sounds like these were repeated, like yeah, yeah. because like the Taylor Swift was completed jabs at at big fan bases. I guess yeah, like if you're gonna take on a big fan base and stuff like that, and and you're you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, you know when when you start shitting on the people who are buying your stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so yeah. So if that if that's the case, really, there's no one to blame. But the Glover brothers, right? right? Like you should know better. Again, yeah. it just shows an immaturity yeah. to me, it w- and and that falls back into like the whole like immediately launching into a Twitter tirade yeah. uh, about the show being canceled. I'm, I'm not too busy. Like, yeah. all right, calm down, dude. Like, maybe play your cards a little smoother next time and and learn from this. I hope they learn from this because right. they're bo- again they're both brilliant guys. Yeah. Um, but this is just like kind of an amateur way to hold, you know, to to handle this situation if that's what it is, sure, and it sure. kind of smells that way yeah. to me. This doesn't I, feel like oh, Marvel fucked this up or yeah. FX. Like anybody who's a fan of Archer knows, like they push boundaries pretty well. The league oh, yeah. pushed boundaries. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> a lot of their shows. Yeah, yeah. that's it's an edgy network. Yeah. You know, uh, Marvel has has put out. I mean, they, they put out Deadpool. They put out Deadpool too. You right. know, like right. Marvel Studios isn't. Probably not. I'm sure they're not wanting to shoot themselves in the foot, though. Yeah, absolutely. So, we'll now, see. the real question, though, as as they bring up in this Deadpool script, is who the hell bit Beyonce? <laughs> <laughs> At theories. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. I I would go Iggy Azalea because she just wants some of that talent. <laughs> first of all, first things first, she's the, the realist. realist. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go from uh, Biting Beyonce into Ready Player One. Uh, so we got a chance on Friday to go see Ready Player One with yeah. some of our friends, Jason, and you got a chance to meet Wade. Hey, Wade. So um, <laughs> it was at the, at the funniest introduction. You go, hey, Wade, this is Ben. He's on my podcast with me. He goes, oh, I, I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never I, felt so shitty <laughs> about this podcast. To in be my perfectly honest, life. I don't even know if Wade's actually listened to the show. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he does. No, I or, think that's more at least <laughs> once. <laughs> no, I think that's like just fall out of like what, the way we talk about you at lunches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel mostly Jason. Bit, I feel a little bit better about yeah. it now. Thank you for that. <laughs> because, like, it's been gnawing in the back of my mind <laughs> since Friday. I'm like. Jesus Christ, like we have really, a bad reputation. Really and I didn't introduce you to that other friend. Yes. <laughs> so I really got in your head. Whoops. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work out. Eddie. I'm apparently dragging the show down, which is probably true, but I don't like to feel that. Feel like you do. <laughs> my, my, what's really fucked I appreciate up, you, Ben. Thank you, because what's really fucked up about it is my love language is words of affirmation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've gotten none I, of yeah, that. I've gotten, kind of, because whenever you get them, you, don't, you hate them. No, oh, but deep down inside, I'd love it. You do? I just, yeah, I, I yeah. think I like being touched a whole lot less. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was that was awkward. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> it was bothering me the whole, like, literally all weekend long of just, like, because we, we, I ended up friending him on Facebook and yeah. stuff, and I just, I kept, like, resisting the urge of, like, typing, like, hey, man, like... <laughs> Do you not like the show? <laughs> I was so insecure about it. It was pathetic. Oh, oh <laughs> that over. that makes my birthday post that much more entertaining. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> Dick. Oh, that's so awesome. So, 
Ready Player One. Great well, movie. Get Can we talk like just how fun that movie was? I, it was all right. It wasn't unf like it was way yeah, more it fun was than fun. I, it was way more fun than I, it wasn't a great movie by any stretch of sure. the imagination. Yeah. This is not a movie I would go see a second time. Yeah, especially in the theaters. Yeah. Uh, I actually think this is a movie that benefits from seeing it at home so you can kind of pause and see everything that's happening. That, yeah, so he, it's weird that I'm the one who's negative about a movie and you aren't. Oh, okay, go ahead. Because I'm not, and here's the thing, I'm not really that negative because it was a fun experience. Um, but this reminded me of some of, and it's funny that I'm comparing it to one of my favorite movies right now. <laughs> I'm going to compare it to Pacific Rim, the original, okay. yeah. where as, as like, as, Charlie Hunnam was not the highlight of that first Pacific Rim. You no, know? the robots are. Yeah, and the, the robots are. are, and I, Idris Elba is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Idris Elba has a pretty badass speech. It's a, it has yeah. that speech, but yeah. like the rest of the, it's really just it's the robots, robots yeah. versus monsters. Like that's what yeah. you're there to see. Sure, absolutely. But uh, here, here's the thing: like just like Hunnam. The lead was so uncharismatic. <laughs> like, I don't know if I ever saw his expression change. In fact, it felt like his avatar was more expressive than he was. It most definitely was. And you know who he reminded me of? Because I, I didn't like him either. He yeah. reminded me of a cheap version of the guy who played uh, Reed Richards in the Fan yes. Four Stick. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, it was, it was funny. Like, it was like a shitty version of him. <laughs> oh, I don't like that guy either. Yeah, was it Miles Teller or something? Yeah, yeah someone, yes. someone on Nerdist months ago thought this took him for Miles Teller yeah. too but he, he, this is the same kid this is the kid who is, is Cyclops in the most in Apocalypse okay so and I thought oh like once you take the visor away then he's gonna get a chance to act and it felt like he was just as expressionless uh, honestly <laughs> as he was with the visor as Cyclops but it kind of worked for me because I like I knew like they were kind of playing with the Mm, shall we say the more autistic spectrum of nerd culture? Oh, did you? You thought him? so? Yeah. Did anybody who's that into something? Oh, I guess you're right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's like, fair. Knows every detail about something. I go. That's true. Oh, you're one of the autistic nerds. I get it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Love you. My God, that's my kid. Right. Love right. it. But yeah, like that's kind of where I. I didn't think I, of it from that perspective. That does change it a little bit. No, it doesn't. It makes it. It still makes it. Oh, does it really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you know. But I thought that's what they were going for. The other, the two other characters, H and uh, and Artemis, were far more interesting. I, I like in the same way that Mako would have been the more interesting lead for Pacific Rim. Mm -hmm. If they had made Artemis the lead, like the the reveal that this world was a dis like you one you already knew was a dystopia, and then two that there was a rebellion. That re first off, that rebellion really sucked. Like it was they, a shit ass rebellion. Yeah, like they they clearly they're are worse than the resistance. <laughs> yeah, they're like they're not effective in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and, and again, these are very like this is definitely nitpicking for sure, um, because it was definitely this is a, also a stupid kid story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like I I do hear people talk about the depth of the story, and I didn't really feel there's it. no depth to the story. Here's where I differ with a lot of people criticizing this movie. I hear a lot of people talking about like really exploring like the ideas of gaming and sort of like the themes that are present, and they ignore the the themes that are brought in with all these pop culture references. And I was like, that's that's just the stage for this story. This story is about this this developer who made a mistake yeah and so this other character doesn't make the same mistakes in his life and realize what's important it's not at all about living in a video game too much or even about the dystopia the dystopia is just a background for the story so with that the story was effective yeah um for for what it was but I, it's funny because i see a lot of people really like trying to read more into things and, and hating it for like deficiencies that i never would have expected from this movie. i think they got that yeah i think probably that a lot of that comes from the book like the readers of the book yeah and you know I, i'm sure like there are a lot there's a lot of because from what i understand is like the story takes place i was thinking about this on the ride home after seeing it the story in the book i think takes over the place over a couple years yeah Whereas this seems to take place in like a week. Yeah, if you, yeah, it's a much more condensed time. <laughs> Way more condensed yeah. timeline. Um, so you don't have the time 
to tell to, to get into a lot of the details to right. get into the really nitty gritty stuff again and you're also telling you're in a movie you got an hour and a half to tell the story exactly how much time do you like okay now we're going to take a 20 minute tire you know tirade about yeah. the nature of gaming and what it means <laughs> right. yeah. Jesus Christ, oh living really? in this world yeah, yeah. Like, talk about how shitty cantabite was right <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny because people are criticizing it for like oh well it turns out he doesn't really like Wade doesn't really fix the problems of this world that like he decides to just shut off the servers for two days a week by the way piss me off oh no I, I mentioned it first <laughs> super angry about that yeah i was just like what if raid night is tuesday or thursday tuesday. that's the only night i could do that's all i got now i can't play this stupid game <laughs> yeah like i was like, like i immediately made the suggestion of like why don't you just have like you a can only play a, you can only play five days a week right you know it's yeah, account it limited a rather specific, than specific <laughs> these specific dates like yeah. you're already established <laughs> that you don't have to reboot servers which is such an mmo player oh, complaint I'm so angry right now about this because you know how like how like antsy you get when you know that the the servers are down even and if you're not near a computer and they don't come back on time and you're right. like what's going on why won't this come on <laughs> I was, yeah, that, I was livid at the end of the movie about that. <laughs> livid. I was like, they fixed so many other little things to like yeah. update it from like the 80s or 90s whenever yeah. they wrote this and put it into like modern. Well, this is, a, this is, this was written like a couple years ago. Oh, this was is, it really? Yeah, this is like 2011. Jesus Christ. Well, <laughs> you think they know then. You yeah. don't shut down. Oh, yeah. On Tuesdays and Thursdays. This is, <laughs> this is important. <laughs> You have everybody out and out and about on the streets on Tuesdays right. and Thursdays. Yeah. Like that's just a no, I was nightmare. not cool with that. That's just like... a nightmare for society. <laughs> like just a nightmare. Like it made no sense whatsoever. I he, here here's a, another thing that I, I thought was <laughs> that was weird with this movie. And and like I love like the Easter eggs are fine. But I don't get a lot of time to really, like, relish and enjoy the Easter eggs. In the same way, like, and maybe this is an unfair comparison. But well, one of the things I enjoyed about the Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie is, like, you get a chance to, like, sit a little bit with the joke and let it sink in and the reference and, like, get to enjoy it. Whereas, like, it almost became a little bit Michael Bay-ish, Bay Bayish at that last fight. I was like, I, like, I saw Tracer for a second. I was lucky to she see Tracer. She has a line. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, like, I saw Tracer long enough to just see, because she's more brightly colored. I think Chun-Li was right next to her. If you but, say so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I sort of saw the Ninja Turtles, but I was only like, because it was the, the, the weird version of them. Yeah, that's you were just, like, oh, that was the turtle. Oh my God, what was happening? That was happening. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, the Iron Giant, obviously you got to see, you know, the Gundam was cool, you know, really cool to see. I'm not a Gundam guy, but it was cool to see mm -hmm. it still, you yeah. know? Um, so it was, it was all those aspects, uh, but I do wish they could have slowed it down just a little bit to let us like enjoy those those Easter eggs. It was frenetic, especially for a Spielberg movie. Yeah. Like Spielberg is really good. Like if you go back and watch like E. T. Oh, they're uh, much slower movies. Yeah. Much slower movies. Much more uh, character driven. Yeah. This was very frenetic for. A Spielberg, Spielberg movie, movie yeah, yeah. Um, and to the point where I agree, like it didn't feel very Spielbergian. There yeah. was a lot of Spielberg elements in it, right? You know, little nods here and there. And I was thankful that he didn't go overboard with like, look at all of my great past. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, we got <laughs> Iron Giant, who had a, a major part to play, and we got yes. the Back to the Future car, which had a major part to play. Right. But other than that, like there wasn't like you know yeah. you. So did you just say Back to the Future car? Are you trying to get our nerd cred taken away? It's the DeLorean, sir. <laughs> Back to, back to the future car. Come on, man. I know it's a DeLorean. But <laughs> you're still hurting. You're hurting the show, man. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Taking this, away our credibility. This is, why, this is why Wade hates me, probably. Because I'm like, you know, the back to the, the future, future car. car. You know. No, have Jason would actually, hate you for that. Have you ever actually driven in a DeLorean? No, but I know it's one of the shittiest I have, cars motherfucker. ever. <laughs> how about that? <laughs> All right. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> so I, I know how shitty they are. Yeah. <laughs> They're wicked uncomfortable. And I was a kid and it was uncomfortable. <laughs> um. Yeah, so it, it was it was really frenetic, and it, but it was exciting. Like the plot made sense. Yeah, it Everybody, worked. The elements worked. Well the enough. elements worked. All the characters worked. Like it, it was yeah. it was a really fun movie. It wasn't a great movie. It was a fun movie. But again, I agree with you. Like this is a movie that you should probably see at home so you can pause yeah. and really like, like savor oh God, this, yeah, this, all of the Easter eggs that are right. on screen because there's probably 17 million of them. <laughs> yes, crammed you, Just in the final sequence alone. You need alone. like a, your zoom button on yeah. your remote. Yeah, you totally do. You take screenshot it yeah. and then blow it up and yeah. yeah, it'll be all that. There was And there were some fun action sequences. The yeah. race was cool. Yeah, the race uh, was and cool. And The Shining. 
The Shining was spectacular. Yeah. The I last battle it. I got a, it was too much. A little I got lost. It was that. a little Michael Bay. Yeah. It was a lot of CG. But yeah. the shining was fantastic. Like yeah. that was a surprise for me. I was yeah. not expecting that. Yeah. And it was so well done. Yeah. And so much fun. It was fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. The actress who played what's her name? The the main Artemis. Trick, Artemis. Yeah. Olivia Cook. Should have been uh, Emma Stone. Oh, really? I, I would have enjoyed that character so much more if it had been Emma Stone. <laughs> That's such a weird thing to say. But the whole time I was Liz, like watching her and listening to her, I was like, Emma Stone would do this so much better. <laughs> so I mean, I'm with better. you. Like, I I enjoy Emma Stone, so I, I wouldn't have a problem. Emma Stone feels a little too old, though. Yeah, that's role. the problem. Yeah. yeah, but like, if you got, if you, you, yeah, if this had been done 10, 15 years ago, yeah. she would have been perfect for but this she, role. But she may be like the next Meryl Streep. I mean, she's good enough to play an Asian chick, apparently. <laughs> oh. <laughs> too soon. Oh, here we go. Too soon. Here we go. <laughs> I couldn't help but. Send your I hate just mail. see the see the I saw a fire burning and I couldn't help but throw Twitter. oil on it. <laughs> <laughs> Certain point of view host makes racist jokes. <laughs> um, now you know you know what I will say was the best gift in this movie was T J Miller. Oh my God! I didn't know he was in this. And when I didn't I heard either. His voice, I was, I was like, like, "Oh, oh yes, oh, I'm excited. This is either gonna be amazing <laughs> or Yogi Bear. Or it's gonna be Yogi Bear. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. I was like, "Well, this is gonna be a story, one way or the other. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> well, let's move on in our into our roundup of TV shows. Uh, We'll kick it off with the CW shows. Arrow had a new episode this oh, week. Oh, good. What's and, going on in the Arrowverse? Uh, some some progress. They uh, they <laughs> things are happening. Well, they said goodbye to a major cast member. Oh yeah, who? Uh, Thea is is gone. She's oh. off. She's not dead, but she's gone off with. Uh, when they brought Roy back like an episode ago. Yeah. or two ago. Yeah, and uh, she's so off, riding off in the sunset together. Yeah, along with Nissa Al Ghul, uh, oh. to like sort of a quest to find these new Lazarus pits and to kind of like take over the the league of shadows type of thing oh, so okay yeah i was like okay i'm fine with that bye like i'm one of the few people who actually likes the but you know i i know i'm i know i'm probably the only person who does because <laughs> I, I always hear a lot of hate for thea but i was like i thought she went on some interesting arcs over the course of the series i loved her in the first season i thought yeah. she was great in the first season and then it it got old for me after yeah. a while well i also liked that she also had a little bit of a different reaction like everybody always was always angry at oliver when he was revealed himself as the green arrow green arrow and she's the only one who like accepted i realized how tough this was for you and everything so like it was an interesting support system for for yeah. him to have uh and she provided sort of an interesting dynamic even and like i even like that was one of the aspects i did enjoy with the league of shadow season when she had to be resurrected and dealt with like you know the the insanity of it and all yeah. so like she was one of the few it was definitely one of the few characters that I thought was consistently better. But again, like the overall, like that, I, I mean, they've also like done poorly handled characters like Laurel. It's yeah. like so, so, so terribly in Felicity, yeah. which they've overemphasized to the point where like you kind of hope they kill her off at this point. Yeah. You know, so my yeah. only problem with Thea is the actress. Honestly. Yeah. I know you said this right from the beginning. <laughs> she's gorgeous. She's a great yeah. actress, but she does this thing that like really irritates me. And it's, uh, uh and I speak through her teeth, speaks through her teeth. Or yeah. She doesn't actually move her mouth. <laughs> her teeth stay perfectly still the entire time. I, I've always watched for it since then. Yeah. That, like I, 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 it doesn't happen quite as often as you say, but it, maybe I think that was more a first season issue. I, yeah. I was like, Oh, somebody finally like, Oh, acting in, talking involves moving your jaws like try that try that try opening your mouth when you talk and that it's just one of those yeah, who is it that does it uh the chick from um oh, I know. Alyssa Milano oh right Alyssa Milano does that where she just you know she just keeps her mouth like perfectly still yeah and just her lips move but her teeth never move and it's just something so off-putting about yeah. like where well, you're just like that. Is that a real person, or is that just like a voice box stuck behind her teeth? <laughs> like, what is happening? Uh, so we had more developments in Black Lightning. Black Lightning. What did you think of this episode? Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. Oh, we we saw uh, the youngest daughter uh, use her power. Yep. And blow up the house. <laughs> you <were> pretty much <laughs> rack, almost. Yeah. Uh, we found out that she is a uh, 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 pure energy, pure energy She's generator. A generator. Yeah. She's a generator, whatever that means. Yeah. It sounds. Well, it sounds like they kind of like the, the powers from. Uh, 
uh, from Je- uh, like Jeff, like basically split into his daughters uh, two different ways. Like they they're sort of to balance yeah. each other. Like there'll be a thunder and lightning, basically. Basically, is what the, yeah. <laughs> and that's be. what happens in the comics. So is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I enjoyed some of the reveals though. I I enjoyed the story with uh, with Gamby mm-hmm. with them rescuing him and everything. Yeah, that was so fun. That was the, like, the was makeup was awful, but it was a fun story, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I like that that they're moving forward. And, now they know he's who's black. Uh, black Lightning. How lady. did you feel about the reveal for the assistant principal being? It made sense. Being a bad guy. It worked for me. Really? Yeah. I mean, like I kind of like forgotten her for a while. I but, totally had forgotten about her. Yeah, but I was like, okay, like the moment they mentioned there needs to be a spotter, I was like, oh, okay, like that actually makes a lot of sense for that. You know, like, since they're looking for kids yeah. to have somebody in the school system. Yeah, yeah. It does make sense. But at first I was kind of like, well, that's awfully goddamn convenient because yeah. it is awfully goddamn convenient. But yeah. it also does kind of make sense. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's we'll TV see. convenience. Yeah, like it's I was for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we had a new episode of Legends of Tomorrow as well. Mm-hmm. What happened in this one? I'm ready to pause this. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. <laughs> this was, oh, oh, they found out that. Uh, oh, uh, they that actually the, killed a major character this time. I'm not going to pause this. We're going to, the people are going to know our vulnerabilities. <laughs> 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 we're an open book, guys. <laughs> not as good as we look. <laughs> Uh, but wait, they, they killed kill? Kawasa. They oh, killed that's the, the right. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, she's she's a I, well. When you said major character, I was like, well, I was a thinking major one character of the for legends. the season. Sorry, yeah. And I was like, I didn't kill any of the legends. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. I, here's here's what I, I loved. It was totally fine with. Us. I I didn't like her to begin with. I loved uh, mixed training. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But even more than that, I loved Nate and Damian Dark. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> played yes. off of each other when so nature was supposed fun. to be tortured. Yes, <laughs> and he's just kind of like, I, I have gone way too far with this thing. <laughs> is, da- Damien Dark is the best thing in this season. Yeah, but without a, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the show <laughs> lags when he's not in it. Yeah, like his appearance in this episode was strictly so that this episode was memorable. Yeah, <laughs> because otherwise it would have been like, I mean, I guess that chick died. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, the reveal that uh, what's her name is a robot or isn't a robot. I'm on. Oh, cl- Ava. Yeah, I'm unclear. Is she a robot? I don't know. I don't really care. I kind of don't care either. I, I didn't like that's that part of the story. Like it was entertaining at moments. The the only thing that made that kind of fun was Gary. Gary, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gary and Damian Dark need to have a show. Their own their show. Own. Yeah, <laughs> just like ditch everybody else. Yeah. Or Mick, maybe. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Mick, Mick is is it's so fun. Much fun. Yeah. yeah, but other than that, like yeah. I, I'm really losing interest in a lot of the other characters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, let's move on to Agents of Shield. We had big episode. Yeah, we finally. finally found out a little bit more of what's happening. We found Hydra is is who we're we're dealing with here. Uh, and sort of the, some of the backstory for the uh, the the commander uh, and and kind of what she dealt with and we saw some familiar faces like Whitehall and Strucker and all some some other some other characters um, kind of how she fits into this picture and this idea that she wants Hydra as, that as she's tried to sort of rebuild it to work with what's been built up with Shield to save the world and we also found out that there's some sort of confederacy of of uh, some alien confederacy that seems to sort of been keeping earth off the you off know the, off the radar yeah. in a way or at least accessible or protected in some way does the 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 threat that they're talking about it feels like it's thanos it totally feels like thanos right totally feels like thanos the only way you don't think this is thanos is if you don't know what's happening in the MCU. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is so, like, I, it's going exactly where I thought this whole season was going. Yeah. But they played their cards so close to the chest, like, you were always like, well, I, I mean, I don't know. I have no idea what's happening this season. Do you think we could have a surprise appearance from at least Coulson in Infinity War? Yeah, he's in Infinity War. Wait, did they say that? I'm um, like, I heard somewhere. No, some... you're thinking he's in he's in Captain Marvel. No, no, no. I heard he's in Infinity War too. That I didn't hear. I heard that. I don't know if it's true. Yeah. It may it may just be wild speculation, and it yeah. probably is. But I would not be surprised. Yeah. Uh, to have him appear at some point. Yeah. 
Like, at least, like, just put him in New York for a little bit. I think, you know what, I, I, yeah, Dania told me this, and she said, that, yeah, he's he is in Infinity War, and we were speculating about, like, like what that looks like. Yeah. Like, he just shows up, I was like... Hey guys, I'm still alive. Hey, what's going on? And like Loki's like, oh my bad, dude. I'm a good guy now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't think he's gonna he's gonna get that chance because it looks like Loki's the guy who's handed over the. Uh, I think the Loki is the first one to die. Ooh, you think so? I think so. I think he goes out in a hero's death. I think like he yeah. goes he goes to uh, to to give this to Than to yeah. get the cube to Thanos. Clearly, yeah. Uh, but to I try to save some of the, the Asgardians who are yeah, on the ship. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, he, that I, I kind of think. I think, think Thor's actually, already going to be thrown off and kicked off the ship, and he's going to hand it over to spare the lives of whoever's left. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. But, yeah, I I, th- I think I think Phil will show up at some point yeah. in this. Yeah. Uh, it would be weird for him not to. Right? Because he was such a, such a pit, part yeah, pivotal part of, of the Avengers. Right. And it would and be a nice. That's they are avenging. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. Yeah, it would be fun. So uh, let, let's wrap up with The Walking Dead. So we got a new episode. Mm-hmm. I did get to watch it. What did you think? Uh, I was bored at first. Yeah. But I got interested. <laughs> because it's in... The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as the episode moved on, I was a little bit more into it. Um, okay. I liked I liked what they did with Carol in this episode. I oh, actually you did. I actually teared up a little bit when they got back to Hilltop. Yeah. With the kid and yeah. Ezekiel and yeah. you know the kid and all they were reunited. Uh, really? Yeah. I like I wasn't expecting that just because of so here's the thing that kind of got it for me was the fact that she finds Henry in the same type of like that was this like under a tree by the river. That's where Sophia hid. Yeah. So like that immediate like connection there yeah. was sort of a really cool and like even Carol opens up to Ezekiel about Sophia as well. Like this is the first time she has mentioned Sophia since before the prison. Yeah. You know. Well and there was a little bit of a uh, reference to her when they went when they were in Atlanta. Lizzie. Yeah. Um but I I I thought that was I thought that was cool. I thought Carol was done well. I thought Morgan sort of falling back into you know this crazy town. Yeah, the crazy town was good. Uh, Rick was as ex- as expected. It feel like it feels like my the theory that I had that <laughs> that Negan is is gonna They're just role reversing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is 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 gonna come out because like I and see I did actually really enjoy Negan in this episode. So th- there was a lot I liked. It was just it was really slow to start. I'm I'm kind of done with Daryl and Tara talking about the the arrow with Dwight and all. But that's and I think unfortunately that's just because comics wise, like I've seen like oh I know Dwight wasn't really trying to kill Tara. He was just he was trying to save her life, sort of you know, um, so she wouldn't get infected like you know infected or anything. So. Uh, like I'm already like done with the whole like okay let's stop doubting Dwight at this point let's move on from that like you've seen that he's helped them in several like important ways yeah I the know- only person who doesn't know it is is Daryl yeah like in the well, audience- and the audience he's seen plenty of opportunities for them yeah, to help. yeah so it's not like like sure he feels bad that he failed to save Denise yeah that's ultimately what's what's pissing Dw- uh, uh, Daryl off, off right yeah. now. So like it, it's it's sensible, but I'm like, all right, I like I, I don't care about that as much. I I liked the whole Rick not willing to read the letter, and the question that he asked Morgan, like if would like you know why did you save me? And it was only because his son was there. Was sort of a like there there was some cool moments there. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm interested to see sort of <laughs> Negan's reckoning, who he picked up in the car. I'm assuming it's the chick that knows that Dwight has betrayed them, was my thought. Um, but, I mean, who, who knows at this point? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm interested to see. I, I kind of expect them to kill off Eugene, actually. I think he's gone such a different path from where he did in the comics at this point. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I think we got two episodes left at this point. Yeah. What do you make of... Um uh, the heapster lady and the helicopter. Uh, I have no idea what to think of the helicopter. I was not expecting that at all. Uh, I'm not sure what that does for the show. Cause that is such, that is such a wrench in this right now. Um, 
I, I just don't want it to turn out like he, here's my problem and, and this is just me needing to move on from it but immediately just makes me think of like when it happened before going to Woodbury and the governor like the because there was like the the helicopter there in a crash and that was just a device to move us to Woodbury so that's all I can think about when I see that I, I'm just like well who like who's around at this point in the apocalypse with a helicopter and access to fuel for one <laughs> See, so, and I went straight to like 1984. I was like, oh, it's just like Red Dawn where everything west of the Rockies is fine. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> That's an interesting thought. You know, yeah. like, like, you know, X amount of, you know, X amount of miles away from the coastline, there's still civilization as a possibility. Right. Uh, I mean, you'd have to go really, you can't go too far. It's still just a helicopter. Yeah. That's the thing that throws me is like helicopters don't go that far you think Air, Andrews Air Force Base is somewhere <laughs> <laughs> from Alexandria yeah yeah they probably never made it that far <laughs> uh, you know, who knows what the geography that when we talked about this last week yeah. about Kirkman's geography I mean oh which uh, shout out to Brian Sue because he mentioned there is a rock quarry in oh Manassas I think he said uh so so there is one there is a small there is <laughs> yeah. one there that you yeah. could find theoretically <laughs> yeah okay all right brian sue yeah so Way to bail out robert kirkman <laughs> he'll send you your well he knows check. his virginia geography a little bit better than we do we've, we've been a, we're north of the potomac we don't cross the river very often <laughs> not unless i have to <laughs> i right. thought it was funny that someone was able to, to figure to, that to out figure out us. where that quarry was yeah like, that it's holding all the walkers at it right now. Right. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Um, yeah. So it was a good episode. Yeah. I, they, 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 I think you, I think your theory is absolutely right. Where they're, they're, they're role reversing Negan and Rick. Yeah. And and Negan's going to be the one to kind of make peace. Yeah. In, in this in this world. Especially like especially after this episode, like it, it really was all like, like yeah. it was like Negan like coming to terms with like oh okay, maybe I, I pushed this too is the far. Wrong path, yeah. yeah, we pushed too far. Like things are out of goddamn control. Yeah. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing his reckoning with the saviors. So. <sighs> Yeah. yeah, that mustache motherfucker, man. Simon. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for him to get his. Oh yeah, I know. I did. I was oddly disappointed to have the long-haired guy get get killed. Oh, I was so happy to see him die, and in a he, particularly yeah, painful yeah, no, way. It was it was a justifiable homicide. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he he was such a good antagonist. But he was. Too. So, oh, I hated him so much. Right? <laughs> I, I'm gonna be disappointed not to have him on the show because I hated him so much. Right. And he was on this week's episode of uh, Black, Black Lightning. Lightning. Yeah, I know. I saw him. Like, oh. oh, look at that guy. <laughs> yeah. He's just annoying here. Is he is there? Right. This guy really <laughs> knows his role. Yeah. He's a bad guy. <laughs> if you need if you need your white trash drug dealer guy. <laughs> Here he is. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so that's it for TV. Uh, I think our next big sort of upcoming shows and movies, I think Rampage and Super Troopers are both coming out in 420. Legion comes out tomorrow. Yep, we got Legion coming out real soon. So I'm jacked for the, Even Jenny yeah. was like, Jenny's been seeing the commercials for it, and she's yeah. like, what is that show? Right. I was like, oh, Jenny, you will love it. It's so fascinating. So, yeah, I'm excited about Legion. Yeah. I'm so excited for, for Legion. So, yeah, so uh, let us know what you think of any of the things we talked about today. Uh, if if there, Do you think there's a chance for Donald Glover to return with uh, the Deadpool animated series? All of that you can get in touch with us. Just go to our website, certainpov.com. All our social media is there, certainpov.com. And until next time, stay scruffy, my nerd herders. Yeah.